know, there's a way this teacher, you know, this old teacher is still dancing. He's, in, he's dancing today. Mm -hmm. When you dance, he didn't die. <laughs> when you're generous and you feed someone, in any way you feed someone, here he is again, clapping his hands. <laughs> somebody said, centuries later, somebody said, uh, in this con, so the guy comes in, he's, in the old days, there's a teacher who would bring in the milk, he'd bring in the pot at lunchtime and say, Buddy Sattvas, come and get your rice. And he'd clap his hands and laugh loudly and dance. And then later somebody said, Well, what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> and, and the person the teacher said, That was a grace before the meal. <laughs> and then a couple of centuries later, somebody said, "What well, that old teacher said that was a grass before the mill. What did he mean? <laughs> <laughs> and so the teacher said, this is what <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, he's still alive, you know. <laughs> it keeps going on. <laughs> so, and that's much better than an explanation. <laughs> oh, that's a complete explanation. Mm -hmm. so but that line, you see, it's impossible to die. Oh, nice. Yeah. Oh. That uh, James Wright poem. Oh. That Chris brought us. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. See that it is impossible to die. Yeah. Yeah, James Wright really went into. He was a poet who did that. Just spreads out forever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so I think I went back and forth between wondering if I was falling asleep and um, experiencing the meditation differently. And I, um, I'm only really familiar with the Pashna meditation, which is sort of is not so much focused on any particular idea and so I didn't even know what I was going to do with you all when I came um, but I also <laughs> didn't want to ask <laughs> and so um, I started focusing on come and get your rice um, and that it wasn't go and get your rice and just it sort of reminded me of the ways that sometimes in my life I have been about going and getting my rice, or telling someone else to go and get their rice, but not saying, come and eat with me. <laughs> and then suddenly the teacher just disappeared and was replaced by my cat. Um, <laughs> and then I couldn't see the teacher anymore, like for the whole rest of the time, there was my cat, because she taught me to come and get my rice. Um, when she was a kitten, she came to my house, and I would put the food down and walk away, and she just would not stopped meowing until I came and sat with her while she ate. Um, mm -hmm. And the minute I felt that image, I just felt so mm -hmm. nourished and uh, animated. And then I thought about this word animated and animal and just about all the lessons that animals keep teaching me. So, yeah. That's good. Mm. It's funny she should mention animation because this koan became a Pixar cartoon for me this time. <laughs> and it was really beautiful. And the, the teacher was very vivid. Uh, I could see a whole large room, an enormous room full of bodhisattvas kind of fading off into the distance, you know, this aerial <laughs> perspective that goes away as you go farther away. And for a while there I was the teacher and then for a while there I was the, the student and going back and forth between the two of them, and I thought to myself, there's really no difference here. Mm. I can look out this way, or I can look out this way, and it's all the same thing. It was really kind of cool. Yeah. I don't understand it, but it was really kind of cool. Mm. Okay. i got to sit with that some more. <laughs> you know, it just keeps revealing itself. It's, yeah. Yeah. I mean, understanding might be overrated. You know. <laughs> 
Well, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like explaining, like... Um, That's why I like cartoons so much. You know, mm -hmm. um, there's a cartoon where, where one, t one bodhisattva actually says to another, in the Dharma there are no explanations and no reasons and no justifications and, no, and on and on. He explains it. <laughs> and he said, now we've all given our explanations. What do you say? And the other teacher doesn't say anything. <laughs> That's what he said. <laughs> and so there's a way in which I found that somebody sent me a great little thing of some tourist thing, but it said, no explanations in the church. <laughs> and it seems like, yeah, you shouldn't explain things in a church or in a temple. Yeah. You know, it's like, you know, because they're here, you know. That's where you go. So, you know, so just the, the way the mind just, that's the hamsters and the treadmills is always explaining things. And, and I said the Cohen's are sleep, sleep. <laughs> Relax, little hamsters. <laughs> Because <laughs> something more interesting will happen if we start explaining the world to ourselves. The uh, Tulsa has a great line about a guy going, um, a guy, uh, it's a, you know, War and Peace, as you know, is about the time of Napoleon invading Russia. And, I mean, it's about a lot of things, but that's one of the things it's about. And, uh, and one of the battles before Napoleon invaded Russia. One of the f figures in the novel um, goes riding into battle headlong into the mist um, with a completely deluded idea of w where the battle is, where the enemy is, <laughs> where his own troops are, and everything's wrong in his head, you know. Tolstoy's great at showing this stuff. And he rides in, and, and as he rides into battle, he steps, he sees this thing shapes in the mist, and, and he keeps explaining to himself how that's not the enemy he's hearing, <laughs> and things that, that he's, uh, and, and, um, and he, and Tolstoy says, and he kept mistaking trees for people, and valleys for trees, and explaining this to himself. <laughs> 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 and that's what we're always doing. You know? <laughs> and, uh, you know, this teacher's idea as well, that's the explanation. And I, th I think a lot of our suffering is our explanations. Um, somebody said this great thing at the break where how sometimes we're really caught by something and then it just stops, it gives us up. You know? And she said, like, jealousy was a thing for her. That just suddenly, it's like you, so, so, I mean, I think that what the Cohen's teach us is sometimes we can just do a dance step and we're out of prison. And we thought we had to do all these things. We had to be virtuous. We had to have a long, like, you know, program of study and suffering. In order to <laughs> and, and if we do, we do. I kind of felt I did, so I did it that way. Because you know? <laughs> you know? that's what I believed I had to do. You know? So it worked for me. But um, <laughs> well, maybe you learn something with your long program of study and suffering. <laughs> but, but also some things you can just dance out of and, and just to know that you can do a dance move and suddenly free because you're naturally free, not because you did a clever dance move. 